And do you know what the disciples said? Ah, them women were eating too many tacos with hot sauce. But they saw him with their eyes. And Jesus said to the women, tell those men that I'll meet them where I told them I would meet them. And he meets them and now they can see that he is no longer dead, but he is alive. And he commissions them to go forth. And I, this is puzzling to me. He rebukes them for unbelief and for their hardness of heart. And then immediately he said, Go into the Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. He already forgave them for their unbelief. And he said, preach this gospel. He said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every preacher, every creature. After he rebuked them for their unbelief. After he rebuked them for their hardness of heart. Now he said, go preach. Now if he were alive today, we wouldn't let him preach. Because of unbelief. But Jesus forgave them of their unbelief. And he says, in these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you shall cast out them. He's talking to men who were unbelievers. Men who had a hardness of heart. This is what he's telling them. Go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. The works that I've accomplished, you will accomplish as well. In my name you cast out devils. If you eat or drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. In my name you take up serpents. And in my name you shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. The Bible says they went everywhere and preached the gospel. The Lord confirming the word with signs following. Preachers, hear me please. If you and I are faithful in preaching the gospel, then we have a right to expect the miraculous and the supernatural. God said he would accompany the word with signs following. This is what Pentecost is all about. The only sign some Pentecostal churches know is the no parking sign in front of their church. The no smoking sign in the restroom. I believe in this, this last day, the signs and the wonders and the miracles are coming back into the church. It's time to get rid of our unbelief. It's time to get rid of our hardness of heart. And to do what God called us to do. And believe him for supernatural signs. I met an Indian brother here today. From India. Back in 1958, I had a son. My young son was born while I was in India. Now, I was looking forward to go to India. I was in a town in southern India called Tiravala. And I was looking forward to this. I was preaching the afternoon service. I went there early to pass out leaflets the leaflet said the blind see the deaf hear and the lame walk 
When my wife and I were pastoring, we entertained a missionary from India. And he said to me, he spent 20 years in India and never saw one miracle. But he was faithful by planting seed in that soil. And another missionary came and watered it. And now it's time to reap the harvest. And I was looking forward to going to India. India is a land of religions. There are Hindus there. There are Mohammedans there. They declare that Muhammad is the anointed one. Now we didn't go there to badmouth their religion. They bowed down to trees and worship trees. They worship. They worship cattle. Didn't know what they were doing. But something was in them that they wanted to worship something. I saw 20,000 around the trunk of a, a, a tree trunk. There was nothing there but a stump. And I said to my driver, what are they doing? He said, they're worshiping their God. I said, who's their God? The tree stump. A darkened nation. And I was looking forward to go there to preach the gospel. First service, there were 50,000 people. And I was preaching to an interpreter like I am right here. And when I got finished, I gave an altar call. And out of 50,000 people, nobody came to receive Christ. Not one soul. No, ni una sola alma. But I wasn't done yet. Pero yo no había terminado. And I told them the meeting's not over yet. Y yo le dije, no el servicio. I come here faithfully to preach the gospel. Yo vengo a el God said he would confirm it with signs and wonders and miracles. Dijo que iba a con I have a right now to believe that God is going to perform miracles. Yo I got a blind man out of the audience that everybody knew. I got a woman that was a deaf mute that could never hear or speak. I brought her to the platform. And another woman they brought who never walked in a horizontal position. Vertical position. Like you and I stand. But she walked in a horizontal position on the heels of her feet and the heels of her hand. 58 years of age never stood upright. I laid hands on the blind man in the name that's above every name. If I preach the gospel of Christ I have a right to use his name I said Lord in the name of Jesus I lay hands on this blind man I command the blind spirit come out instantly the blind eyes open the man The deaf mute came. Never heard and never spoke. I put my finger in the ears and my thumb on the tongue. I commanded a deaf and dumb spirit to come out in the name of Jesus. Instantly the spirits came out. Jesus loosed her tongue. Her hearing came, and I had her speaking in English. She didn't even know her own language. She was deaf and dumb. But God performed the miracle. Now it's 
time to pray for the woman. 58 years walking in a horizontal position. And before 50,000 people, my interpreter, I could see that he was getting nervous. Because I said, today, now, at this time, I'm going to pray for this woman in the name of your God, Mohammed. And I'm going to command her to get up in Mohammed's name. My interpreter said, oh, no, 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 Brother Shambhala. <laughs> now, I've learned a long time ago, you're at the mercy of your interpreter. I said, please, brother. I'm under the anointing of the Spirit. Do what I ask you to do. And I told the people I didn't come here to badmouth your religion. But I come to give Muhammad equal time. Because I know Muhammad is not a lie. I said you all visit his shrine and his tomb. But the tomb of Jesus is empty. He's no longer there. Jesus is alive. He lives in me. In the works that he did 2,000 years ago, he's going to do tonight. But I said, let's give Muhammad equal time. I laid hands on the woman. I said, in the name of Muhammad, rise up and walk. Mohammed couldn't hear me. Mohammed couldn't hear me. Somebody asked me, what if that woman got up when you said that? Then I'd be preaching Mohammed tonight. But I never expected her to get up. I said, now I'm going to use the name that's above every name. 58 years in a horizontal position, bound by the devil. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this spirit, come out of her. In Jesus' name, rise up and walk. She stood on her two feet for the first time in 58 years. People started flying over the walls, jumping out of trees, and they all headed for the platform. They were loudly talking in their own Malayalam tongue. And I grabbed my interpreter, and I hid behind him. I thought they were going to tar and feather me and run me out of their country. And they're hollering. And I said to my brother, what are they saying? He said, they're all hollering, Jesus is alive. Listen, 
You have no right to preach the gospel no tiene derecho a predicar el evangelio unless you can demonstrate the gospel si no puede demostrar el evangelio Jesus Jesus in his word declares to Paul the apostle declara a través del apóstol Pablo I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Says when I came I did not come with enticing words of man's wisdom. But I come with a demonstration of the Spirit of God with power. That your faith will not stand in the intellect or in the wisdom of men but that your faith might stand in the power of God. Thank God for Pentecost. I'm not looking for just a little tongue. But I'm looking for some power. Somebody that has the power that Pentecost. But you can say that the sick rise and be healed. This is historical that's going on here tonight. I'm on 63 nations in radio. I preach around the world on television, on TVN. I feel it within my spirit that we're living in the last day. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming then. Jesus is coming. Jesus is that was Dutch, bro. And Jesus is getting ready to do a quick work. He's raising up every believer. And he's filling them with the Holy Ghost. Now you know what the Bible says. I preached a message on this some years ago, but I don't have time to, to preach it today. 500 believers witnessed his resurrection. But only 120 were in the upper room. What happened to the 380? The 380 thought they had it all. They saw his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But this is not enough. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait. For the power, the promise of his presence. The promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, the Holy Ghost can't come unless I go and send him to you. And on that day of Pentecost, when it fully came, they were in one place they were in one accord and the Holy Ghost fell on them cloven tongues like as a fire sat on the heads of every one of them and they began to preach the gospel in another language another language another language and they were having a convention in Jerusalem at that time from many many countries and they heard the gospel preached in their own tongue and they said what is this Peter stood up and said this is that which was promised by the prophet Joel I want you to know if this isn't that I'm going to hold on to this until that gets here but Jesus Christ poured out his spirit and he's still being poured out today 
of the Lord. And the world is going to see a demonstration of his power. I'll never forget right here in New York City. Back in the early 60s. There was a blind lady came to me to get healed. I was in a theater over the 160th and Broadway. And I had about 800 people to pray for. And I asked those that had blind people to bring them first. And this woman came and I put my hands on her eyes. I said, blind spirit in the name of Jesus, come out of the eyes. I said, that's it, mama. Accept it by faith. God's healed you. I put my hand on her back and tried to move her along, but she dug in her heels. She said, I ain't going nowhere. Just like a woman. I said, come on, mama, it's done. She said, no, it ain't done yet.